He is pursuing his dream of earning a degree and willing to work hard to do it. College degree is one of the check boxes, you know? And I'm just like, oh, I gotta get that degree. Dallas Metamorris was doing well, studying by day, waiting tables by night, loving LSU. It's got a beautiful campus, all the trees and you know the lake and everything. It's so beautiful. But on May 27th, 2020, the unthinkable, around 11 at night after a hard day of school and work and an evening out with friends just off campus. I was walking, I was a pedestrian, and it was a hit and run. A vehicle struck Metamorris and left him for dead on I-10 in Baton Rouge. 11.30 at night, I got the phone call that every parent dreads. Emergency workers rushed Dallas to Our Lady of the Lake Hospital. After a month of care, doctors offered his family little hope. He's done, like he's done, it doesn't look good. Um, we just ha have to sit and wait and see what happens. Dallas suffered a severe brain injury and after struggling for life, he had to relearn everything. When he first woke up and he started talking to us, he thought he could see. He told us, what are you talking about? I'm not blind, I can see this, I can see that, and he couldn't. His vision was gone. Uh, a car hit me and then um, it, I'm completely blind now. Dallas's extensive brain injury shut down his optic nerve. So after his accident, um, it was a very long, lengthy recovery <laughs> process. Um, and cognitively, he was not there for many, many months. Yeah. And then after that, when I came home, I still needed a lot of therapy to bring me, um, bring my cognition back to a good standpoint. And Dr. Walker was great for that because I really was an incapable and my mind was just in a, a place I didn't know because I was blind. I had 20-20 vision my whole life. And that day, it cut it off. And on top of that, brain damage was on top of that. So it was very difficult for me to assimilate with the world in in that manner uh, as like with my uh, like all my abilities gone when he got home and when we all got home honestly and the reality set in it was a huge slap in the face because we had all these people these professionals taking care of us for five months we come home and it's just us um, and so I specifically started looking for um, a therapist who was um, who was who specialized in um, traumatic um, PTSD therapy, and he came up, and we hit the jackpot. December 2020, uh, dead mid COVID, and uh, I remember his mother approaching us for help. We entered a therapeutic relationship with each other for nearly a year and nine months. For Dallas and the family, uh, multiple layers of challenges. One certainly is the traumatic grief that comes with that type of injury and loss, um, not just his eyesight, but he you know, not being his, uh, his old self, as mom would say. And then uh, certainly the cognitive challenges that come um, with that type of recovery, the brain doing its best, the best it can um, to become whole again. And a lot of our work, we're exercising that. Um, and for Dallas, like many uh, individuals with head injuries, it has a lot to do with emotional regulation. And so how to um, be able to recognize that you might be over or under responding to something in your environment in a way that just doesn't benefit you as, 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 as well, so. So working with Dr. Walker, when he went in, um, it was either yes or no, black or white, straightforward. And so he felt like in his depression that that was the end of the road for him. There would be no um, moving forward in life. He didn't like the fact that he had to think about living with his parents for the rest of his life. And out of that came lots of depression. 
knowing yeah. Dallas knowing every week that he was going to walk in there and be able to speak to a professional, right? The respect that comes with that. Um, who was able to, I guess, um, help him realize that life's not over. Life is not over. It's taken a huge turn. You're not going through the doors you thought you were going to go through, <laughs> but there is a way. Um, just the, uh, the progression of my hopes, I guess you would say, because like my mom was said, Ma, I didn't think there was a way. I thought I'm blind now and my life is shattered. That one I'm not gonna be able to do. I'm, my life is gonna go nowhere. And once I had my time with Dr. Walker, he placed that back into my mind that yes, there is a way you can do something with your life. And the, the, the worst times don't last forever something will change and get better for you. And talking to Dr. Walker really helped me with that um, because he gave me not only just spiritual, just talking about my life and how to deal with it mentally, but practical too as well. He researched other blind people and what they have done in the real world and that brought my hopes back up and now i've come i've been able to progress because of that further and now i am back at lsu louisiana state university taking 13 hours of college right now he's doing wonderful he's living on campus independently and i honestly feel like he would not have had the the courage to do that um, if it, he wouldn't have gone through therapy with Dr. Walker. I think Mercy Family Center uh, does its best at meeting p people where they are and meeting the needs. Now we can't serve everyone, um, but thankfully we have a large constellation of talent um, at Mercy Family Center that ranges through our psychiatry service, um, through our social work service, through our services that are provided in schools, through Project Florida Lee. So I think together as a group, we're um, proud to be able to follow that mission of the larger Mercy Health System. Hope is important in anyone's journey. Without it, we're lost. And we gain that hope through hearing other people's experiences. Um, we're hoping that that will give someone else the same kind of hope that Mercy Family Center gave us.